And by the way, the food that we eat also uh, is supportive of our gut health. But remember I told you inflammation in the brain actually pickles your brain as well. So when you have good, good gut health, um, and it actually improved the score, the cognitive executive functioning score, all because of the elastic acid and another bioactive we think called anthocyanin uh, as well. The, the brain is the mastermind of health and of life itself. So you can lose an arm, you can lose a leg, you could lose a kidney, no problem. Okay, you can have failure of an organ, no problem. As long as your brain's functioning, you're going to be breathing, you're going to be thinking, you're going to be able to, you know, do the fundamental things that we need to just survive. And so over time, evolution has made it so that the most important thing that our body protects, first and foremost, is our brain. It is, it is the number one thing. So for example, you know, people who wind up being in a bitterly cold area, let's say you get lost in the North Pole, all right, your whole body shuts down, okay, uh, except for your brain. Everything gets preserved to the brain. Okay, well, I'm an expert in blood vessels. I study blood vessels, and many people don't realize this, but we have 60,000 miles worth of blood vessels packed inside our body, adult body, but 400 miles of those blood vessels are packed inside our skull around, around and inside our brain. 400 miles of blood vessels inside our brain. And these blood vessels actually uh, grow in, uh, it's kind of like a map, like Google Maps. And if you kind of look at where are all the highways uh, and byways uh, of, uh, of the brain, you will also see with the nerves, the nerves of the brain track alongside the blood vessels. Blood vessels and nerves course side by side. So when our blood vessels are healthy, our brain has a chance to be healthy. When our blood vessels are sick, not a chance that your brain is going to be healthy. And so that's one of the reasons why it's so important and so possible to actually tend to the garden of our blood vessels, those 400 miles uh, in our brain. is so important to take care of. Let's take it a little bit further back to how our blood vessels help normal healthy brains, right? Like when we're children or adults, you know, and we're in our prime. What are our blood vessels doing? Well, first of all, our blood vessels are the channels, the highways and byways to bring the oxygen that we breathe to every brain cell and also the nutrients that we're eating through our diet. Those blood vessels are bringing those nutrients to our brain cells. So the highways and byways of nutrition, uh, the, the lifelines of oxygen, like the scuba tanks uh, of our brain, this is what our circulation actually does. And by the way, that uh, circulation, those highways and byways have to be very, very smooth and unimpeded. There shouldn't be potholes in the road. There shouldn't be blockages in the road. No boulders should be in a road blocking the blood flow. Now, what happens when you have potholes is that you know, you wind up actually dinging your tire, just like uh, uh, when you're uh, on a highway and you have a pothole. It's damaging to actually go down that highway that where the road is damaged. Blood vessels can be damaged. And so it's so important for us to maintain the healthy lining or the surface of the blood vessel. And we absolutely need to avoid getting blood clots in our brain. A blood clot in the brain is kind of like a boulder from an avalanche that got set down into the middle of the highway. And now the traffic piles up behind you, and that's exactly what happens in a stroke if you actually wind up actually having a blood clot in your brain. And what's going to happen? The brain's going to uh, suffer, including dying potentially. Now, one other issue that can happen with blood vessels is you need to have the structure of the blood vessel to be really, really solid so it's not leaking. So think about a blood vessel as a tube like a garden hose, maybe, you know, for your lawn in the summertime, as long as it, the water is flowing through the tube, you're fine. You can water your lawn. But imagine if you actually poked lots of holes in the side of that garden hose and the water spraying out everywhere. Yeah. Okay. When blood leaks out in your brain through your abnormal blood vessels, the blood leaking out can also cause a different kind of stroke. And there's one more thing about blood vessels in the brain, which is probably very linked to dementia and, and let's call it brain health before dementia because that's what we're looking, that's what we really want to talk about is how do we keep a healthy brain and, and avoid dementia. There is a grate, a sewer grate, a filter between our brain and the rest of our body. And it's made of blood vessels. It's called the blood-brain barrier. It's not really a barrier. It's more of a filter. Okay. It actually protects everything above our neck 
meaning our brain, our eyes, all those sensitive structure from everything else in our body. So if we wind up having a raging infection in our body, that filter protects our brain from getting infected. And similarly, our blood ve- it's that great is made out of our blood vessels. So we need good, healthy blood vessels to have an intact blood-brain barrier. It's not really a barrier. It's a protective shield. It's a filter. It's a sieve. Our blood vessels are uh, carrying us through our everyday lives. And decisions, ordinary decisions we make uh, can influence the health of our blood vessels. How high our blood pressure is. If you've got hypertension, high blood pressure continuously for years, it puts you at a higher risk of having blood vessel problems in the brain, including stroke. If you have low blood pressure, Similarly, it could actually uh, interfere with the amount of blood that is going to nourish your brain. If you've got clogs in your heart, if you've got clogs in your legs, you know, uh, atherosclerosis, narrowing of the blood vessels, that's also happening in the brain. You know, we go to the doctor uh, for our, quote, health care. It's really sick care when we go to the doctor generally. But health care is what we do at home. And so one of the things that we're able to do is to use food as medicine to help heal and maintain the health of our blood vessels. That's something that's well established. All these things are sensitive to our diet. We can keep our blood vessels healthy. What are some of the things that do that? Well, eating plant-based foods, you know, the polyphenols that come in our colorful vegetables, eat the rainbow, guess what? That rainbow helps to heal the blood vessels and keep that lining nice and smooth so blood can flow as well as possible. Uh, Omega-3s, you know, we know that marine omega-3s, which you can actually get from, you know, oily fish and even not so oily fish and even shellfish can actually um, help to preserve and maintain that slippery, smooth, normal uh, lining of the blood vessels. Okay, very, very important for our brain health, not just for heart health, right? Omega-3, good for heart health. Turns out omega-3, great for brain health, all right? Flavanols, you know, the polyphenols, flavanols, guess what? There's been studies looking at flavanols coming from plant-based foods like cacao, Cacao is the plant source for the material that's used to make chocolate. Dark chocolate has more flavanols, and ultra-high flavanol chocolate has been studied, and it protects not only heart health, but lowers the risk of dementia by improving brain health at the circulation level as well. So food as medicine is a no-kidding thing. And by the way, the food that we eat also uh, is supportive of our gut health, Uh, Here at Zoe, you guys have spent so much energy helping to connect to gut health with other parts of our health. And so I want to make another one, which is our gut health and our brain health are connected through our heart health, right? Gut brain is now becoming uh, accepted as, you know, yeah, I always knew that. But now we're talking about the heart as a way station between the gut and the brain. So it's really interesting. So it's gut, heart, brain. Now, how does the gut actually um, work? Well, you know, good, healthy gut microbiome, you want to feed it fiber, you want to feed it prebiotics with polyphenols from your food, you want to have it the chlorogenic acid from your coffee, the catechins from your tea, all right? You want to keep it away from uh, all the harmful ultra-processed foods and preservatives and chemicals that, you know, are going to harm your gut microbiome, do more good for that neighborhood of your gut microbiome. It pays us back. How does it pay us back? Well, it lowers inflammation, for one thing. And by the way, lowering inflammation isn't just good for lowering the risk of cancer and improving the symptoms of autoimmune disease. But remember I told you, inflammation in the brain actually pickles your brain as well. So when you have good good gut health, that lowering of inflammation, the butyrate, the acetate, the propionate that you may have talked about on other podcasts, actually also helps to lower inflammation in your brain. I don't get paid by any companies doing any of this stuff. I'm just telling you the facts, the data is really convincing. So ARIDS is recommended for people, frankly, over the age of 50 to take once a day in order to be able to protect their vision. But here's the thing. The stuff in ARIDS is really, you know, some vitamins, there's lutein, there's zeaxanthin. These are these chemicals that I just mentioned, zeaxanthin and lutein. These are natural chemicals that mother late nature has laced into foods. What are some of the foods? Watercress, kale, broccoli, red bell peppers, uh, persimmons, uh, 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 tomatoes. You get these same type of natural bioactives just from the foods that we can eat. So, you know, this whole idea of plant-based foods, which is a generalization, we can be more specific. 
have carrots, red bell peppers, kale, uh, leafy greens like watercress. Those actually contribute to uh, blood vessel health for your eye to, to lower the risk that you might have blood vessels going out of control. They tame the lion. And the other thing that they actually do is they also, because you're eating them, they go into the bloodstream. They also affect your brain. They also protect and tame circulation to ensure better brain circulation as well, better blood flow to the brain. Now, I'm going to tell you, um, not only has that sort of been shown by the dietary supplements that translate to food, but there, by the way, the, the other thing that's really cool is that there's some evidence that's starting to develop that the, the supplements for eye disease also protect against dementia as well. Isn't that cool? Foods are uh, really important because we can also protect the blood vessels directly. So there are foods that there's a substance in strawberries called elagic acid that we know um, actually can prevent abnormal blood vessels from growing. They're blood vessel tamers. And when you actually have elagic acid uh, from a strawberry, elagic acid is what makes strawberries tart. Okay. Um, and if you get organic strawberries, um, uh, they actually have higher levels. And the reason is because the strawberry plant naturally makes elagic acid as a response to being nibbled on by bugs in the environment. Mm. So this is mother nature's wound healing response. So when you grow naturally, the strawberry is going to have more elagic acid. When you eat an organic strawberry grown naturally, you're going to get more of this blood vessel protective response. Recently, it's been shown by a group at University of Cincinnati that eating just one cup of ripe strawberries per day for six weeks, this is published in a research uh, uh, journal, actually uh, in, in middle-aged people who uh, had mild cognitive deficits, right? Not full-blown end-stage dementia, but mild, you know, like, where are my keys? So I, I'm sorry, what is that again? You know, the, the thing that you're starting to develop the symptoms and right. actually improve memory, improve memory, strawberries, one cup against the placebo. It reduced the depression and frustration of not being able to remember things. Okay. Um, and it actually improved the score, the cognitive executive functioning score, all because of the elagic acid and another bioactive we think called anthocyanin uh, as well. So again, you know, we're beginning to tease apart. Like I always tell people, uh, don't worry about the chemical names. Don't worry about remembering all the details. Like people like me who study food as medicine, and I write about this in my book, let me do the heavy lifting for you. Let me tell you that what we're beginning to understand is that some specific plant-based foods are actually able to protect our blood vessel, protect our vision, and what's good for our eyes or good for our brain. So you get a twofer, a double-barreled approach to overall better quality of life and protected function. Talk about more than 200 foods that are all been vetted and actually float to the top as super healthy. And I also identify a number of foods to cut down or cut out. But let's start with three, right? Because people can remember threes. And uh, and I love kind of like the, your, your framework of, of the four choices that you can actually make. So here are three things that I would actually tell you as a food is medicine researcher and, and as a clinician who wants to put rubber on the road to help people uh, get started uh, to do something for themselves. Three things to actually avoid. All right. Cut down or cut out. Let's call it that. Let's put it that way. Um, soda. I would yeah. say um, drinking soda, which is really popular. I grew up drinking soda, you know, like every, most other people. Um, uh, something to cut down and cut out. Lots and lots of added sugar to it. Okay. And even the diet sodas, which actually have um, uh, uh, non-nutritive artificial sweeteners, um, they actually can also damage our circulation and damage our brain function by in, in interfering with our gut health, which we're now beginning to realize is connected to our vision health and our brain health and our overall body health as well. So cut down, cut down or cut out sodas, whether it's diet or regular, number one. Number two, cut down on ultra processed foods. And when I, and I'll give you a concrete example. If anybody who follows sports, you know that the, the big events, whether it's the Olympics or whether it's the Super Bowl, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, people get together and what do they do? They bust out the chips. Uh, chips actually are a great example. Uh, you know, those nuclear colored chips are a great example of something that everyone loves. Okay. But they're ultra processed. They take whole foods like wheat and other kinds of whole grains and they machine them and extrude them and then paint them with colors and then put artificial preservatives and flavorings and seasonings all to, to do something that really might be addictive, you know, because it's hard to eat just one. Um, uh, but the bottom line is that 
the, those ultra processed foods of which I think snack chips are a great example. You, you name your favorite ones, cut down or cut out because those actually harm our overall health defenses. They take down our shields, uh, including for our vision, including for our brain. Um, eat them every now and then if you want, but honestly, they're not good for you. Cut down or cut out. The third one I would actually tell you is processed meats. Processed meats, by the way, by the World Health Organization, is classified as a carcinogen. All right. We do know that actually eating processed meats is increasingly increases the risk of colon cancer and esophageal and stomach cancer if you eat them a lot. We now know with modern research that those types of ultra processed meats, bologna, salami, pepperoni, all the stuff that are made. I'm not talking about the old world, old school things that are air dried and minimally no preservatives put in them. Those are a different type of product. I'm talking about the stuff you can buy cheap at the deli that are found everywhere. They're sliced onto your pizza, cut down and cut out. That is definitely if you're filled with um, uh, added nitrates or added coloring, added colorings and seasonings. And so um, those are the three things that cut down or cut out. Soda, regular di- or diet, uh, ultra processed foods like snacks and chips that are so common. And the third thing is processed meats. Now, if you want sort of what I call uh, grand slammer foods, these are foods that do not just one thing, but they do multiple things uh, to light up your life, okay, light up your health, including vision, including brain health, including heart health, including muscle function. If you're trying to be fit and you're working out and you want better muscles, you need to regenerate your muscles, you need better blood flow. So I like to, I'm going to give three grand slamming foods that I think are just winners. Number one, tea, all right? Tea is the second most commonly drank beverage in the world. I I have one as well, okay? Uh, And we used to think that green tea was like the best. Probably is. But recent research has shown that green tea, oolong tea, black tea, even super fermented tea like uh, pu'er tea, which is a, a tea from Southwest China, all light up your health. Better for gut health, better for circulation, better for brain health, lowers depression, improves your blood pressure. Amazing uh, uh, but scientifically shown and clinically shown benefits. So tea is one category to add in your life. Um, by the way, don't add sugar to your tea. All right. Drink it <laughs> as straight as you can. And if you're going to add sugar, be if you're going to put sweeteners, you can use honey. Or you can use sort of more natural sweeteners. Just don't dump chunk lots and lots of, of uh, uh, cane sugar uh, into it. Um, uh, and, di- and dairy, too. I'm giving you some fine points here, uh, uh, but they're practical. I think people like practical yeah, things. You absolutely. know, the British tea is actually to use milk in your tea, the afternoon tea, have a little milk or cream to your tea. A lot of people like that. Second, berries. I'm good. I'm using berries as a category, so you get to choose your own. All right, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, lingonberries. You pick your huckleberries. Pick your own wherever you are. They are tiny but powerful because the bright colors, the blues, the reds, the oranges are all made with – are all caused by and, – and, and the amazing flavors that, that pop out of a ripe berry is actually made with uh, – is, is caused by these bioactives, but polyphenols, the elagic acid, the anthocyanins that really, really light up your health in all kinds of different ways. And by the way, for berries, here's something practical. Look, I'm a big believer in going to the farmer's market and buying the seasonal fresh berries. But here's the thing. You can actually get frozen berries, which are less expensive, and you can buy them in bulk and store them in your freezer, uh, easier to deal with, okay? And they have the same bioactive value. They're picked from the field, flash frozen, and you're good. So second, berries. Choose your own. They're all good. Fresh or frozen, I'd still recommend that you go for those now that you have some room because you removed other things. Third thing that I would actually tell you is brassica, which is a category of vegetable, all right? If you're in Asia, that'd be bok choy, gai lan. These are all the kinds of very common if you go to your local Asian grocery store. Almost all the fresh greens in the produce section are going to be brassica, all right? Um, But if you're on the other side, the Mediterranean, which you also know is a super healthy way of eating, you're talking about your broccoli, you're talking about your black kale, the ca- Tuscan kale, the cavallanero. You're talking about your cauliflower, um, all kinds of different types of greens of different sorts. Great source of dietary fire, great source of bioactives that actually light up your brain health and light up um, your blood vessel, your vascular health, and light up your immune health while lowering inflammation. And you get to choose. 
from the repertoire of Mediterranean recipes going back generations or the repertoire of Asian recipes to be able to find ways to take the salad bar, which I find one of the most boring things that you can actually encounter, and to turn it into something that you would actually look forward to eating to, uh, look forward to eating because it really, really tastes great. So the three things I would say, tea, berries, and this whole brassica side that you'd find in the produce section of either the Mediterranean market a grocery store or the Asian market. And now there's no excuse not to be able to find something green that you'd like to eat.